the next couple of lectures, we are going to work on the information bar of our template. I have my template already open here, and the information bar is situated right here at the top of our template. We're going to start by dividing the information bar into four sections. A user section, a screen name section, a recipe section, and a date and time section. We will start by removing the one large rectangle here and replacing it by four smaller rectangles, one rectangle for each of the four sections. The text here on the information bar might obstruct us while working on the rectangles, so I'm going to make that layer invisible. So we go to Layout and we make the text layer invisible. The height of each rectangle will be the same as the existing rectangle, but will have a different width for each of the four rectangles. For the rectangle for our user information, we define a width of 75 pixels and we place it all the way on the left. For our screen name rectangle, we start by copy pasting the existing rectangle and we define a width of 239 pixels. Now we place it nicely next to our first rectangle. Copy paste again for our recipe rectangle with a defined width of 132. For our last rectangle, which will display our date and time, we define a width of 234 pixels. Now we place it correctly on our layout, and we're done with rectangles for now. Let's show the text layer again and put some placeholder texts on top of the rectangles so we know which rectangle will be used for what in the future. So on the left will be our user information. Then we will have an area that will display the name of our active screen. Our third section will display the actual recipe number and name. And our last section will contain the current date and time. Now that we've assigned different sections to the layout of our information bar, it's time to get to the main topic of this lecture. We're going to add screen name information to the information bar. The desired result here is that the name of the active screen is displayed on the information bar. We're going to achieve this result by executing the following steps. First, we're going to create a text list with the different screen names. Then we are going to create a tag that we'll use together with the text list to define which text in the list should be shown. In our third step, we are going to set a different value for our tag depending on which screen is loaded. And finally, in our fourth step, we are going to add the text list to the template. So we start with our first step, creating a text list with the screen names. To create a new text list, we go to our tree structure on the left and we select text and graphic lists. Under text list, we create a new text list with the name text list screen names. If our tag has the value one, we will show the text process overview. For the value five, we will show alarms. For value 10, we show recipes. And for value 20, we show settings. So why didn't I just use values one, two, three, and four? Why did I use the values 1, 5, 10, and 20? Well, the exact values that you use here are a matter of personal taste. But I like to treat each main screen, process overview, alarms, recipes, and settings, as a screen category. So for example, the main alarm screen has the value 5. If I would like to add other alarm screens in the future, like an alarm buffer screen or an alarm diagnostic screen, I would like to use value 6, 7, 8, etc. for this. So by creating some distance between the values of the main screens, you allocate some space for more possible screen additions in the future. Now, I would like my screen names to include the screen value. The reason for this is that it will straight away be clear which screen has which value, and furthermore, it will automatically order the screens by number under the screen group. So for each screen name, I add the screen number to the front of the name.
That's it for step one. In step two, we're going to create the tag that we'll use together with the text list. This tag will be a local tag and it will be part of the template tags. So we open the local template tags table. We are going to name our new tag screen number, the data type is integer, and for local tags, the connection is set to internal tag. In our third step, we are going to set the correct value for the tag depending on which screen is loaded. We start with our overview screen. Here we go to events, and under the loaded event, we are going to add a new function that will assign a value to our tag. The function for setting a value to a tag is called setTag. The tag that we want to use is the tag that we've created in the previous step and the value that we want to set our tag to for the overview screen is the value 1. Now we copy paste this function to the loaded events of the other three screens and we adapt the tag values. So value 5 for the alarm screen Ten for the recipe screen, and finally twenty for the setting screen. In our last step, we are going to add the text list with the screen names to our template. So we go back to our template. We are going to add screen names right here at the top and let's start by removing this placeholder text here. Now in order to visualize our text list on the screen, we are going to use an element from the toolbox called symbolic IO field. So we open the toolbox here on the right and we drag and drop this element to our template. Because it's a text and it will be on top of our rectangle graphic, we start by assigning layer 3 to our element. Under General Properties, we are going to assign the text list that we've created in step 1 and the tag that we've created in step 2 to the element. So we select Text List Screen Names for our text list and Screen Number for our tag. We are only going to output the screen names. There is no need for any input functionality, so we change the mode down here to Output. Now what's left to do is to change the appearance a bit and place the element correctly on the rectangle. Under Appearance Properties, we select a transparent background with no border. Our text color will be our default dark blue color. Under Layout, we select Fit Object to Contents and in the Text Format Properties, we change the font size to 15 pixels and we change the horizontal alignment to centered. Now we place the element nicely in the middle of our rectangle here and we are done with the final step. Let's quickly test what we've made in this lecture. You guys remember the shortcut for simulating the application? Ctrl Shift X, that's right. So as we navigate through the four main screens, notice how the screen name in the information bar changes depending on which screen is active. Another small victory guys, our application is shaping up quite nicely. So that's it for this lecture. Now in our next lecture, I'm going to show you how to add the current date and time of the PLC to the information bar. It's going to be a short lecture, but lots of fun and it will take us one step closer to finishing our template. Thanks for now, see you on the next lecture.